This is Yala, a remote corner of Sri Lanka that is shrouded in mystery. For 13 centuries, this was a land ruled by an ancient Buddhist civilization. thousand years ago, all of its inhabitants mysteriously vanished without a trace. Today, this vast windswept jungle is a national park. And two men have come here because they share a dangerous obsession, the big cats of Asia. In Yala, they hope to expose one of the best kept secrets in the natural world. They believe Yala may be home to the largest concentration of leopards anywhere in the world. But so far, no one's been able to prove it. These two men are about to spend the next 18 months on a hunt for the new and dangerous rulers of Yala. This is Colombo, capital of Sri Lanka, and it's my first stop in the Leopard Trail. I'm a wildlife cameraman from Scotland, and I've come 6,000 miles to meet the one man who knows most about the leopards of Yala. Johan Kamara is a Colombo businessman. For the last six years, he spent all his spare time tracking and photographing the leopards in Yala. He's been able to identify 18 so far, and he tells me he's filmed some unusual behavior as well. Can we see the leopard in this? The leopard's actually now in the trees, and if you notice, the uh, kind of the calf comes out from the left-hand side of this tree, and the leopard jumps on the calf. And there Ooh. they go. It's unbelievable. And yeah. at this point, we were trying to figure out if the leopard was dead or not. Yeah, never yeah it's seen not anything. moving at all. We've never seen anything like it. We were really surprised. Yeah. A female leopard at that. Very surprised. The Asian leopard's the only big cat I've never filmed before. I can't believe that this leopard's hanging onto the buffalo calf, even though its mother's trying to kill it. It was incredibly lucky to survive. OK. But it's just such an amazing piece of behavior. It is the type of thing, actually, I wouldn't, unless I'm seeing it from own eyes, I wouldn't believe, yeah, I really that's... believe it. Jahan's convinced there's more leopards in Yala than anywhere else in Asia, but now we've got to prove it. The next day, Jahan takes Gordon to Yala for the first time. By working as a team, they're hoping to figure out just how many leopards are in the park. This Land Rover here is twice my age, and it's a, a filming vehicle. We've kitted it out with these two camera mounts on either side, so hopefully we won't have to do too much manoeuvring when we have a leopard sighting. This fine gentleman in front, he's KG, he's going to be my driver for the whole project. We've got a tracker who's just a, another good pair of eyes for helping us spot leopards, so we just have to go off and try and find one now. OK, KG. <laughs> As soon as you get inside the park, it's quite easy to find some of the animals. But there could be some problems hunting leopards. You can see the entire park from the high rocks and the coast. It's quite a stunning landscape. There's miles of beaches and these vast sand dunes. It's down here on the roadside, we're going to have the best chance of seeing leopards, but I'm quickly realising this thick forest going to have trouble enough finding them, let alone being able to film them. Jahan is also searching for one special group of leopards. He's heard a rumour of a female with three cubs, which is extremely rare, and a sign leopards are doing well in Yala. Any signs? Nothing at all.
Early the next morning, the team spot the first signs of a leopard. These leopard prints are really fresh. Here they call them pug marks. A carcass could also be a sign that a leopard's nearby. But Jan tells me that alarm calls are the best sign of a leopard. And within minutes, Gordon's filming his first Asian leopard. This male is one that Jahan knows well, and he says he's the biggest leopard in the park. Weighing over 200 pounds, Yala's leopards may be the largest in the world. The male leopards are notoriously bold here, and often use the park's trails in broad daylight. In Sri Lanka, this male really is king of the jungle. And it gets even better at the end of the day. Can you get a clear view from there, John? Yeah, I can, I can see well. It's late in the day, but we've found a male and female. And this can mean only one thing. Going over the back there. Can you see it from there? Covering me a little, but I can I can figure out what's going on. Quite ironic that the first bit of filming you're doing is mating leopards. I just hope that this is an omen. Was the light enough to film, Gordon? Barely enough. I got some, but it's quite underexposed, so it's not ideal, but still something. But at least in some sort of light you got mating, which I'm happy about. What do you think the chances are of it still being here tomorrow? It's worth a try. I, I mean, mating is so rare. Getting it two days in a row would be really unusual. So we really are quite lucky. See the leopard at all now, Jan? Should we, um, should we just go? Mating leopards usually stay together for several days, so there's a chance these two will still be on the rock when Gordon and Jahan return. close enough to clearly identify the male. He's never seen a female before, but she can't be the mother of the three cubs because she wouldn't be mating again with cubs still in tow. Identifying a new female and recording mating is a great start to the project. That's one more leopard to add to Jahan's list. And there's every chance this pair will have cubs in a few months' time. The last two days have been great. But Jahan's determined to find the three cubs, and he's called in Yala's other leopard expert. Ravi's a local doctor, but he's been photographing leopards here with Jahan for the last six years. And the two of them know Yala like the back of their hands. Next month, the team are able to get glimpses and quick photographic stills of leopards, but filming them is proving almost impossible for Gordon. Jahan 
John is also frustrated because there's still no sign of the family with three cubs. Go ahead, Johan. Where are you? I'm on top of a rock. Any luck so far? No, nothing. I'll just check Komala and come that way. OK, see you then. After the success we had right at the beginning of the project, the leopard sightings have been incredibly low. We've just been catching glimpses of them. And we've been restricted to the roadsides and the few clearings that there are alongside there. And it's just a huge element of luck to this. And when you look around from here, you can see why there's these rocky outcrops and thick forest and scrub jungle. It's all perfect leopard habitat, but it's far from perfect for us. Even worse, it looks like the weather's turning. When it rains, the roads turn into a kind of sludge and it's impossible to get around. For now, they're lucky. See you up there. Some great news. Johan found a fresh leopard kill at the top end of the park, so we're just going to rush up there and see if we can see the leopard. Um, Madapara? We've just come past the junction, and Johan said it's not that far from here, so. I'm just praying it's not that close by, because with this thick bush here, it's going to be impossible to film anything. I don't think it's going to be too far away, because there's crows flying up ahead, and I think I can smell. It's here, Gigi. Stop, 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 stop. This kill being right out in the open is just perfect for us, but it might not be too good for the leopard. It's maybe a wee bit too exposed. And there's a monitor on the carcass at the moment, and the crows, you see the crows are all in the trees all around here. The leopard's probably just sitting up in one of the trees at the moment. It's getting quite hot, so it'll probably either wait for us to go or for it to get dark. six hours now. Just caught a glimpse of the leopard by the roadside there. We'll get another 20 minutes of sunlight. I'm going to have to put this camera away shortly, but it's a great opportunity to put the infrared camera through the paces for the first time. In spite of six years tracking them, Jahan and Ravi have no idea what Yala's leopards get up to at night. All that's about to change. visible to us and the animals, but it's actually casting about as much light as the scar headlights on full beam. But, but just by looking at the monitor from pitch blackness out here, I can see exactly what's going on. It's amazing. Oh, it's starting to it's trying to catch a frog. That's fantastic. This male leopard is only about a year old, so it's unlikely he killed the huge spotted deer himself. The mother is probably watching nearby, and the cub can't seem to decide whether he should eat the deer or play with it. For first outing, it's great to have captured this on, on tape. A few teething troubles, so the eye shine from the leopard is going to be a real problem, but certainly for first night out and first time using this camera, it's excellent. The first time Sri Lanka's leopards have ever been filmed at night.
and the number of new cats the team have found in the park continues to rise. that the authorities have given us special permission to film in the park at night. It's immediately given me a whole new view of Yala, and animals that seem really nervous during the day are completely relaxed at night. One further down into the trunk, you see. And all three are probably above. This is what Jehan has been searching for so long. After two months, he's finally found the three cubs. Now the team need to maneuver the jeep into position to see them clearly. It's the vehicles. <laughs> right. The mother isn't here, but that's no surprise. Adult females tend to be very jittery and rarely reveal themselves in daylight. I didn't actually see, I just saw that first one on the left. I didn't see the other two on the other. Don't they know I mean The cubs are seven or eight months old. One female and two males. And they look to be in excellent condition. <coughs> it's hard to believe it's taken us so long to find these three, and they're sitting just a few feet away, totally unfazed by us. It's been well worth the wait. <coughs> were so relaxed that the team were able to spend the next 12 hours with them. They had plenty of time to photograph each of the three cubs. So there's now a record of their individual markings in Jehan and Ravi's leopard ID files. For Jehan, today's sighting is particularly special. Most of the sightings have been just the two males together. The females yeah. always been separate or with the mother, so it's pretty lucky to get catch all three cubs together mm. and spend all this time with them. So have you ever spent a whole day like this with them? No, never, no. I mean, long time ago in Wilpat, I, I mean, childhood memories of <laughs> three cubs playing, but no, it's pretty faded. <laughs> I've, I've seen three leopards before, but never had so much. And never, I mean, never, never for this long. <laughs> no. No. Not, and not in good light either. You know, it's fantastic.
and they found the cubs just in time. Rain is coming. Soon, the only way to get around the park will be on foot. Have you ever actually seen anything here? I've seen elephants and stuff, never leopard. Bear, 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 slot bear. Yeah. You have good luck. Yeah, great, great seeing him on foot like. Yeah. Like, glad he didn't come this way. Have you seen a pair as close as that before? But in a vehicle, which is totally yeah. different to being on foot because you see the claws just yeah, clattering yeah. on the rock. Yeah, these trackers, I mean, everyone I speak to consider them the most dangerous to meet on foot. Right, they're really? really, yeah. Heaps of instances where poachers have been mauled badly, really, even killed by sloth bear. Uh, far more so than a leopard. Yeah, definitely. With the arrival of the monsoon, the team now have to confine their leopard hunting to fewer areas of the park. Most of Yala's residents welcome the rain. Lanka's weather has become unpredictable, and no one knows what effect this is having on the animal population in Yala. stop, Gordon and Jahan go back to look for the three cubs. They can only find one. There's no sign of the other two. And a few days later, they become extremely concerned for the missing cubs. Park authorities have caught poachers with two leopard skins, and they've asked Jihan and Ravi if they can identify them. <laughs> Ravi is the expert when it comes to recognizing individual leopards from photos. Until now, leopard poaching has been rare in Yala. It could easily be a small female. Could be. I don't know how. If one can definitely say they're cubs, I don't know. I haven't had much experience with skins, but is this a professional job? No, it's not it's a professional job. And that's why even the... You know, in a way, that's hopeful that it... Maybe it's... Yeah, they're in inexperienced. But if there's intentional leopard poaching, that's, uh, that could be a serious... I'm seeing much on this. Ravi compares the patterns of spots with photos taken of the cubs just a few days earlier. It's difficult to say, so we just have to keep looking and hope that we come across the cubs again. With the discovery of the skins, the search for the cubs steps up a gear. Jahan and Ravi ask other leopard enthusiasts from Colombo to join them, 
and soon everyone is sharing sightings, videos, and information. This large Colombo network should make a difference, yet despite all the searching, there's no sign of the two missing cubs. But Gordon may have a lead. We're just on our way to this huge wild boar carcass I found yesterday morning. I popped out and had a look at it, and I don't think it's a leopard kill, but I think what had happened was a croc had got a hold of it when it came to the water to drink. It's going to be quite smelly by now, so hopefully the crocs will have found it and come out and have a go at it. Or even a leopard. And Gordon is right. I'm glad we came back to check this wild boar carcass because we've been checking on it since morning, afternoon, and night for the last day and a half. And it's finally paid off. There's a, a leopard adult female there trying to just pull it over the wall. That carcass must weigh about 14 stone. It's absolutely huge and it smells terrible as well. And she's not happy at all. There's a, there's a crocodile that in front of it there. Crocodile. There's a crocodile there. That's what the leopard's hissing at. Wow. Oh, and that's, that's massive. Oh, you can see it much clearer now. Oh, no wonder the leopard's going so, so mad. It's the crocodile that's there. There's a bit of a tug of war. Obviously, that's why it's in such a rush to try and get the, the carcass over that wall there. Fantastic. With a situation like this, you never know what the outcome's going to be. And although the, we're losing the light here for the film camera, we've got the infrared camera. So we're just going to set up the night and see how this whole situation resolves. This could be the first time anyone has seen a face-off between a leopard and a crocodile under cover of darkness. I'm just staying off into pitch blackness here. I can't actually see anything. But when I look at the infrared monitor, I just see the carcass on its own. The leopard's disappeared and the croc's gone back. But guaranteed, the fact that the leopard was here during daylight hours means it's definitely going to come back at night time. So we'll just sit, sit and wait. And we've got the whole night. So. big enough to kill a leopard with one bite. I just heard some movement across there. And there's another two crocodiles. Things really hot up. This is getting better. There's another leopard just joined the two that are already here. 
Looks like it's mother and two cubs. But I don't think this is the two that we're looking for. Now the crocodiles have reinforcements. Jan's not going to believe this. There's three leopards feeding on the carcass, and there must be about a dozen huge crocodiles just spread through the bushes advancing on the carcass. Clearly outnumbered, the leopards have to surrender the carcass. had any other choice than abandoning the carcass. Just found this drag mark in the road here. The leopards caught something and dragged it off that way. Looks like it's something fairly big. We must have missed it by a matter of about 15 minutes. We've been down this road once already and our tire marks are underneath the drag mark. It's just another great way of finding leopards. First we have to find out where she's dragged it to. It's in the trees here that starts to get a bit more difficult. You can see here these leaves have just been brushed out of the way. There's another little clue here. This little sapling's been bent over with the carcasses snagged on it. is here. Seems quite nervous. It's flicking its tail a lot. She's incredibly nervous. She's just darting back and forward. He's much too small. That's both leopards away. They should come back after dark because they didn't feed that much. 
I'll be ready for them if they do. After several hours, Gordon gets more than he hoped for. That's a cub just got up and walked off. The mother's just come onto the kill. taken over the carcass. That's unbelievable. After a good long feed, the mother and cub move away for a rest. And the bear quickly moves in. now but I'm not. That bear came right up to the hide on its way to the kill. I'm getting really worried now. This 
doesn't feel safe. KG? Come and get me. The next day, Gordon and his companions returned to the hide to see what happened after he left. There's a huge bear-shaped hole in the front of my hide. completely ripped open the front. I'm extremely glad I wasn't inside when that came along. I see it was after the leopard left last night that I did begin to feel really unsafe and that's why I decided to, to leave. Prior to that I was just scared, but then it began to feel really quite dangerous, so I thought no, time to go. Not far from last night's incident, the team discover why the bear may have been in the area. There's a palu tree nearby, and its small sweet fruit is a special favourite of the sloth bear. The bear's still here, but I feel a lot safer filming this morning from the jeep. This one has a cub with her, and they're supposed to be even more dangerous then. So it's probably a good thing I bailed out last night. Sloth bears will climb to precarious heights to reach the sweet fruit, and they can strip the trees bare with their long, sharp claws. While Gordon is preoccupied filming the bears, for Jihan, the priority is to find the missing cubs. Gordon, we have sight of the leopard. Okay, we'll be there in a second. See, to the jungle. Trying to decide between sloth bear and leopard. Okay, there was one fairly kind of smallish one that ran across the road in front of us just before we started talking. Yeah, but there's two. Okay, we'll keep an eye peeled. I can't believe it. I'm filming away with the bears and it looks like the missing cubs might have turned up here as well. These are the missing cubs. The langurs may have spoiled their hunt this time, but the cubs look big and healthy enough to cope on their own. And they may have already taken their first steps towards independence. This is a highlight of the trip for me to see that all three cubs are alive. And now it looks like they're out on their own. Jahan is also delighted all three have been found. But there are concerns for their future. The cubs seem remarkably trusting of humans, which could be a problem if poaching continues in the park.
After 18 months tracking the leopards in Yala, the team now have proof that the park is home to the highest concentration of leopards in the world. The number Jehan and Ravi can now identify has risen from 18 to well over 30. And with Gordon's help, they've also been able to see into the leopard's secret nocturnal world. But the discovery that poachers may also be gaining in numbers means the future of Yala's leopards is far from secure. And long after Gordon has returned to Scotland, Jehan and Ravi's hunt for the leopards of Yala will go on. Thank you.